So hello guys, today we are going to talk a little about uh, Jack of the Lands 3, how the game has been received and what we can expect in the future. Just recently, Hamerman Games posted a roadmap for the next four updates and um, they also made a developer stream where they talked a lot about some of the things that we can expect in the future and they also mentioned a lot of other things uh, that I thought I would share with you guys. If you haven't seen the video, you can go see it. So first off, if you look at the state of the game right now, there's uh, approximately 2,000 active players on Steam. Yeah, and the game sold 217,000 uh, copies on Steam, and it got 88% positive reviews. But the point is that THQ Nordic, uh, that's the publisher of the game, has uh, allowed Hamilton Games to actually uh, keep working on it. Actually, according to uh, the people at Amimon Games, THQ said, go all the way, maximum support. And that's just really nice because uh, that means we can expect a lot of uh, continued support to the game. And they do have more patches uh, planned uh, other than the four patches we're going to talk about today. What they also said is they have no plans for DLCs to the game as of right now. They also have absolutely no plans for microtransactions that half the development team have actually threatened to quit if THQ Nordic would force them to implement microtransactions. What they would like is that people enjoy the game and recommend it to friends and they would like to keep on improving the game and have people buy it. And they actually find microtransactions harmful for the long time survivability of the game. In any case, on to the roadmap. So the first patch we can expect to come uh, very soon. They didn't give an exact time frame, but they said that it's very close to being done and they could tell a lot about it. It's uh, patch 1.2.0 and it's called Bun. Every patch, uh, or at least the next five patches, are named after mercenaries. So. The first thing they want to do is that when you shoot at the arms or the head or the torso, if you miss, say you want to shoot at the torso, if you miss, uh, some of the bullets might hit the legs instead or the arm instead. Right now, every bullet you fire, if you hit auto fire, will either hit the torso or hit nothing at all. And they want to change that. So if you shoot at the torso, for instance, but you miss, you might hit an arm or a leg instead, or even a head, so you could be lucky getting a headshot. Of course, it would also change the game a little bit, because uh, if you aim at the arm right now and you hit, let's say, one bullet, you will lose some some accuracy, but that's about, and get some damage, of course, and that's about it. But if you shoot, uh, auto fire, for instance, and aim at the arm, you might actually be lucky and get an arm shot, a leg shot, and a head shot. So you can actually be very lucky and have a lot of damage and a lot of uh, status effects put on the one you're aiming at. Of course, it works the other way around as well. So the enemy will be able to do the same thing to you. But uh, overall, I think it's a, a cool, nice little thing and it does add a bit more realism to the game. So another thing they're going to add in the next patch is the ricochet of bullets. Right now, for instance, if you shoot at a wall, we can clearly see the bullets ricocheting off the wall. However, the ricochet does absolutely nothing. So practically speaking, it's just graphics right now. They're going to change that so you can actually get hurt by the ricochets. Technically, it would be possible to shoot someone that was in full cover by shooting uh, into a wall and ricocheting the bullets back to him. They didn't mention if the bullets would do less damage after ricochet. I'm hoping uh, they'll change it so that the bullets actually do less damage after ricochet because that would make sense. It would also actually be possible if you're here and you had an enemy here and you shot at him and missed him, it would hit the wall instead and it would fly back and hit him and you so you could actually damage yourself that way. It's probably not going to be something you can really exploit. Like watching me walk. But there's, there's most likely going to be some moments in the game where a ricochet kills some someone or hurts someone uh, and it should make some really awesome moments in the game. 
of course they they are trying to make it so that they will ricochet according to the angle of impact so it should be as realistic as possible another thing they will implement is uh, the speed of combat rounds or or more precisely the ability to turn on and off uh, the speed of combat round basically this is mostly for the end game kind of game where if you have a lot of uh, enemies they will need quite some time to actually think now they are all moving they're moving very slowly everybody has to move there will be hidden moves Grenade. ouch taking cover damn and if you have a lot of enemies like 50 or ah, more everybody. these rounds can be very very slow even more so if you're playing a lone wolf character and you're fighting like 50 guys you might have to do a 10 second move shoot your gun and then you'll have to wait quite a long time so they want to change that so you have an option to actually press a button and the actual move of the enemies will be a lot faster now they don't recommend using that for new players and they don't recommend using it uh, in smaller skirmishes and they do not recommend using it uh, early on in the game but later on in the game if you're fighting a lot of people uh, you can use it but of course you won't see all the npcs moving you won't see where they're coming from so in that sense you will lose out on a lot of info but it could be very practical to people who just want to skip all the enemy moving so to speak we've seen this in other games and it's definitely something you you will turn on on occasion now this patch 1.2.0 is not a hundred percent set in stone yet but it is kind of close as it's uh, fairly close to being published uh, more importantly they will keep an eye on the feedback once the patches uh, come out and they might change a few things later on so uh, one more thing they wanted to add is and that's actually just an oversight on their behalf is that right now it's impossible to scrap uh, the knives and it's also impossible to scrap some of the grenades and that's pretty much more of an oversight than an intended uh, part of the game so that so they're going to make the ability to scrap knives and and explosives they will also make it so that if you have a lot of knives you can stack them up and you are able to scrap more than more than one knife at a time also they acknowledge that much and by the way they love much they use a lot of but they do know that modders sometimes make stuff that will break the game so in order to help out modders and by extension all the players they are planning to release an unstable build of uh, the game and they will release those unstable games probably about a week before the patch goes live this will give the modders a lot more time to actually prepare their mods for the for the future pets and also Heimann Games see this as a win-win situation because by giving the modders the ability to work on the unstable build the modders might actually find and identify some bugs they can then report them back to Heimann Games and Heimann Games will then have time to actually fix those bugs before they push out the patch a week or two later and I totally agree that's an absolutely win-win situation for the modders for the players and for the studio. Lastly, they said uh, when speaking about patch 1.2.0 that this patch and every path forthcoming would support game paths as well. So every change made would include support for game paths as well. So before we move on to 1.3.0, please hit the thumbs up and click the subscribe button. It really helped me out a lot. In any case, patch 1.3.0 has the code name Vicky. And the reason it's named Vicky is because she has a perk that gives her plus 7 damage and 15% crit if she has fully modified firearms and getting fully modded firearms can be hard and it's not they they want to make it easy but they think it's a little bit too hard at the same time they got a lot of feedback about people missing an in-game shop like Bobby Race, and actually the devs themselves missed Bobby. And they actually do think that not having Bobby Race and or something similar to Bobby Race was one of the biggest features actually missing from the game. They also think that B 
being able as a modder to make weapons and add them to bubble race should be a really easy way to get guns into the game so they'll they're gonna support that the modders can actually make weapons and put them into bubble race they're actually working towards make more of an economic structure in the game they know that some people not all but some people have a ton of money when they're nearing the end of the game they want uh, people to have something to actually use that money on for instance buying uh, armor or guns and stuff like that so the plan is to add uh, bubble race in the game and you will be able to buy stuff from bubble race that it's not going to be that uh, once you log into the game and start a new game you can instantly just buy the best weapons and the best guns they weren't exactly clear on how it would work precisely but uh, you'll probably be able to sell guns and buy guns, sell armor, buy armor, sell ammo, buy ammo, and buy modifications for the guns. It might be that stuff is very expensive, but it might also be that the further on you go in the game, the more stuff Bobby Race will have to sell. Also, NPCs will buy stuff from Bubble Race, so if there's a gun in the shop and you don't buy it, it might not be there next time you check the, the shop for it. They weren't exactly sure whether there would be stuff in Bubble Race shop that you could only get from Bubble Race, but that might be a possibility in the future. So that's pretty much patch 1.3.0. Uh, they didn't mention anything else that would be made uh, or changed in 1.3.0. That doesn't mean there cannot be added more to 1.3, but this is what they have on the drawing board right now. Patch 1.4.0 will be pretty much a quality of life patch. There will also be some balance of some of the operations. For instance, they could add some XP for doing uh, scouting missions, or maybe you could get some loot while doing scouting missions, or there would be maybe less chance of wounds. They also mentioned that it would make maybe more operation. It could be like a single merc practice and a skill. As far as I recall, that's how it worked in uh, Jagged Alliance 2. would set every merc to train a specific skill, and he would do that. And they might bring some variation of that back. Another thing they would add was an improved sector stash. So better ways to filter and maybe stack items in the sector stash. Maybe make different categories in the sector stash and stuff like that. They will also try to balance or change the way enemies attack your areas and positions and stuff like that. However, 1.4 is kind of way off. It's not going to come anytime soon. So they were kind of vague about what exactly they're going to do because they didn't want to say anything they would regret later. So that's pretty much it for 1.4, 1.5. This is the big one. The code name for update 1.5 is Larry, and that's because Larry is crazy and mods are crazy. This will include the second part of the mod tools. This will allow modders to make new maps and new campaigns. As I mentioned, the devs adore mods. They check out a lot of the mods on the Steam Workshop, and they will look at mods and take from mods what they like and implement it in the game. They said several times that they like how mods can improve the game in general, and they, they have the opinion that the symbiosis between a modder and the developers will basically just make the game better. This is the main reason why every game should have mod support. And it's basically a way to get a lot of good ideas from modders, implement the very good ideas into the game, and evolve the game that way. They would like to push out the mod tools right now, but they're not ready, so it has to wait. It takes a lot of work to make proper mod tools, and they're working hard on it. We just have to wait for it to be done. One of the things they said that they really would like is that once the mod tools come out, the second part of the mod tools come out, it should be possible to actually make a total conversion of the game and remake Jagged Alliance 2 or, or 1. And if anyone does that, they promise they will play the hell out of it. 1.5 is far off, but I can't wait till it comes out. So that was it for the planned updates for now. But as I mentioned earlier, they actually already have planned uh, update 1.6. And as I said, it has the code name Meltdown. So I don't know exactly what that covers, but I mean, we can speculate. 
that's it for the updates themselves. To round up, it looks like that the uh, Jagged Alliance will keep being updated for quite some time to come, and that the developers at Havenman Games are committed, and apparently GHQ Nordic as well is committed. But before I end this video, I just wanted to add some fun random info. Uh, some of you might have noticed there's a lot of teddy bears in the game. Actually, this all started as a office joke that some of the map designers uh, added teddy bears all over the place when making the maps. At some point, they made so many teddy bears all over that the, the lead designer thought, with all those teddy bears, we need a teddy bear quest. And this is uh, the reason we actually have the teddy bear murder. Another fun fact was they were asked in the chat what game they would remake if they could make another game. And what I found interesting, and hopefully they will do so, is that they would remake Silent Storm if they could, if they are allowed to. Uh, I hope they will be allowed to, because I would love to see a remake or a next installment of the Silent Storm games. I love those games to death, and I played them a lot. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully we will see update 1.2 soon, and until then, uh, have fun out there, and racks are up.